I think I can speak for all of Red's country. Joey Votto, thank you. I mean, don't, 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 don't tear the ball off the cover down there in Seattle now. I mean, <laughs> hey, don't even worry about it. Oh, don't even worry about it. Hell, honestly, it'd been better off if we decided just to not even bring the bats. Save them. One run on one hit. Nick's loading in. I got to apologize. Uh, first of all, I'll, I'll get out in front of this. Let me do that. That's what a good PR firms, they always tell you to do. You got to try to get out in front of it. Got to beat everybody to the punch. This one's on me, okay? Uh, sometimes in life, you think that you're going to be able to finish one thing to be ready for another thing, and the first thing doesn't finish in the time frame that you think it's going to finish in, so then that requires you to get into a spot where Quite frankly, uh, you are running behind. But the good news is, is that I made it. And Nick did as well. Uh, I am so thankful. Uh, this is going to be one hell of a show. I got to be honest with you. It's going to be one hell of a show. We got to see what rabbit you pull out of the hat tonight. I am glad to see, though, that you have the Ted Lasso jersey on. Because, boy, do you need that today. What's up, Trace? How are we doing? I, get, I, I think I've been better. <laughs> how, have you, how are you doing? I'm good. You tell me 7 p.m. I go and no, I it's try on to get me. a couple of things done. L listen, listen. The whole thing's and on me. Down and you're alive. You're no, alive. The, the, the whole thing's on me. Yeah, I mean, listen. It's on me. Okay. I, I, when, I, when I'm falling on the sword, it's not even falling on the sword. Like, this is the whole thing's on me. I was supposed to be ready to go by 6. I thought I was going to be here by 6. I didn't even get back home till 640, whatever it was. And then I rushed down here. I turned on the machine and buy, I fired it up immediately. Just couldn't he, wait to talk to the people. Oh, I couldn't wait to tell them about how many hits we got. You know how many hits we got today, Nick? I, I have it in the box score recap, my friend. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what, sure. I, I bet that box score recap's loaded with nuggets. It, it's, it's two paragraphs. That's impressive. I'll tell you what. Uh, you're the kind of guy that's able to write like a 20,000-word essay. No problem if you got two paragraphs on today's game. Yeah, I'll sum it up in my frame. You ready for my, my box score recap? I'm ready. Uh, the Reds sucked. One hit, one run. Thank the Lord that Ellie De La Cruz struck. Because otherwise, it would have been one piss-poor performance after a couple piss-poor performances the nights before. But somehow, people are going to complain about the bullpen. Somehow, people are going to complain about the pitching. I don't know how we do it. I love this chat. I'll tell you what, I love this chat. I lo I opened up the chat, and the first thing I seen was how bad Lucas Sims is. I'll tell you. Anyways, I digress. You, you, I'll tell you what, I've got this show all over the place already. 
And you know what's funny? It's still better than what it's still better than the game. Nick's just laughing. This is how you know when Nick's just like, you know what? What do you want me to say? I I I I can't I can't really say a whole lot tonight or today because uh because you know let's be honest. I don't want to say it was a Sunday in Oakland because it wasn't a Sunday in Oakland. You know why? Because a Sunday in Oakland, I actually felt like the Reds were actually playing okay baseball and they might have won the game. Today, to be honest, I, I have I, I my hope is dwindling, as some are saying. You still have faith, though, don't you? Uh, yeah, I have not lost a full faith. Uh, okay. After a, right. after a ten and ten and ten start. Oh, ten and ten. I mean, we've played the sisters of the poor. The sisters of the blind and the sisters of the one armed, and 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 we're at we're ten and ten. I don't know. Maybe I mean I got I'm gonna need your help today, because you know what I'm falling. I'm 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 in quicksand right now, Nick, and I'm going down fast. Well, it's, look, it's a good thing they they swept the White Sox. But you <laughs> sweep a team. You sweep a team. Look, it gives you a little bit more of a margin for error. Um. It's a long season. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> this was a rough series. I, I, <sighs> I saw it. I saw it. I saw a tweet that really like just kind of encap, encapsulated it uh, from uh, uh, Joe. I'm losing the name. The Fox 19 guy. Uh, Reds gave up five runs in Joe Daneman. Joe. No, no, the other one. Jeremy Rao. Jeremy. I couldn't remember his first name. Uh, but Reds gave up five runs in three days and swept uh, the White Sox. Reds score five runs in three days and get swept uh, in Seattle. So just that's how it goes. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, chat. Uh, we'll do our best to do this show. Nick, you know, Nick has an appointment. <laughs> this is hilarious to say out loud. Nick has an appointment. He's got a hard stop at 750. If I'm talking about the Reds today uh, until 750, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm probably going to be behind me when this show's over, laying in the middle of my middle of my basement completely dead. Same. I mean, you can you can keep going. I'll just I'll jump off. You keep keep going. Oh, I you got I, it. I, I, you got I, it in you. I don't. I don't got any of that in me. At this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna see if we can't get Fetters and uh, Rick S and Scott down there at Great American on Friday and see if we can't find a way to put a ball in play. Got India stat line. Good God. He he made the uh, he made the graphic. All right, let's do it. We got a show to do. Um, let's let's see this two paragraph box score recap. This is going to be a thing of beauty. All right, your box score recap: Ellie De La Cruz at a solo home run to right center field. Second inning put the Reds up one nothing. Fortunately, that was the Reds' only hit they'd get on the entire day. The only other base runner was a Tyler Stevenson walk. Andrew Rapid, he was pretty good again. Uh, he was able to work around some traffic on the bases. Uh, only two blemishes on the day for him were two solo home runs. He left with the Reds trailing 2-1 going into the seventh. In the seventh, Lucas Sims, he gave up a solo home run on the very first pitch that he threw to Josh Rojas. Sims walked the next batter, uh, Jonathan Classe, but he did strike out Julio Rodriguez. During that at-bat to Rodriguez, uh, Classe stole second base, but Julio's swing brought him right over the middle of the plate. I, I have no idea why interference was not called. Uh, that did prove to be somewhat important because the next batter, Mitch Haniger, singled to make it 4-1 Mariners. Sims really lost it. He walked three batters and walked in the Mariners' fifth run. Uh, David Bell went to Alexis Diaz, probably more so just to get work with a day off tomorrow. He got a strikeout to get the Reds out of that inning. Uh, Diaz also pitched a clean eighth inning, but the Reds' offense, as mentioned, didn't do a whole lot. Reds fall 5-1. Reds uh, swept by the Seattle Mariners. All right, we got a deep drive of the day, though. I tell you what, we can get fired up about that. Let, this is a pick me up. Let me stand up and do this. Actually, let me get up. Let me let me get the blood flowing. Let me let me let me let me, let me start feeling a little bit better about myself around here. You know, you, I always tell people stop feeling sorry for yourselves. I'm gonna stop feeling sorry for myself right now, as I pull up the the ad read. You know why? Because I forgot we did have a deep drive of the day. Uh, you know, usually when you only have one hit, uh, you don't have a deep one. But by God, the one. Thank God, the one was a deep one. Ellie De La Cruz homers. That's his fifth of the year if you're keeping count at home. On a fly ball to center field. Exit V low for those that love the exit V low. I know we got some. 103.8. 
If you do the math on that, that's a 25-degree launch angle, and that goes a distance of 391 feet, which actually goes out of the ballpark in Seattle. That gave the Reds a, a win probability. Believe it or not, I know you won't believe it when the game's over, but I know you. I, I know that at this time we had some hope. 57%. Can you believe it? 57%. We actually had a chance to win. Little did uh, the analytics uh, server's Lenovo department know that the Reds would only get one hit the rest of the game, and uh, that would ultimately lead to a 0% chance of winning. But uh, the deep drive of the day is sponsored by DSC, and we love DSC because they are a leader in renewable commodities for biofuel production, specializing in used cooking oil collection, aggregation, and sales. Visit www.deepsouthcommodities.com for more information, and thank you to our friends at Deep South Commodities. Josie better watch it. If I start practicing a lot, I think I can get down there. Great American. You got any Josie impersonations? By the way, really good. Best in the biz, some are saying. Thanks to our friends at Deep South Commodities. I know that has nothing to do with Josie, but I'm just trying to lighten the mood. Let's all remember this is just a baseball game that we center our lives around, do 162 shows for, take time out of our family's lives, our kids' lives, our own lives, if you think about it. I mean, we only have so much time on this God's green earth, and here we are. We could be climbing the Rockies. We could be looking at Mount Everest. We could be uh, visiting, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe um, a national park. Could be gazing at the sunsets every night in the middle of the Maui. But nope, we watched this Cincinnati Reds team, this franchise. And uh, this year, uh, right now on uh, April 17th, as much as I love Stuart Fairchild, uh, we're watching a team that has him hitting in the three hole. And um, against right handed pitching, by the way. Let's not get it twisted. I don't know what to do, Nick. I thought we were good. I really did. You're gonna have to talk me off the deep end here. I'm just gonna shut up because otherwise I'm gonna I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna be one sinking ship the entire time. I, I don't know what to say. Jonathan India, you have the offense on there. You might as well change that to offensive, by the way. I wouldn't even call it offense. This is your time to shine, Nick. I'll let you go. I don't know what to say about India. He he, he you gotta swing the bat first and foremost, usually, to put the ball in play. But Yeah, I think India pretty clearly needs a day off. I'm sure if, if Candelario was healthy or whatever is going on with him. Um, he probably would have got that off day to day. Uh, it seems like he's maybe caught in between kind of feels like on, on some of the, some of the at bats that he's had. Uh, look, these are three really, really good pitchers. Uh, I, 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 what else do you it say? Is what it is. I know that I, it's I mean, a tough show. It's a tough show, Nick. This is the toughest show we've done in a long time. Same. They're great. They're great pitchers. The Reds' offense was terrible outside of Ellie De La Cruz, and I'll, I'll also say outside of Spencer Steer. Um, I thought Spencer Steer had another hard hit ball. The Reds. This is not a game where you can, you can make any hard hit excuses. They only had three hard hit balls the whole day. I thought Steer also got really squeezed in in a um, in an at bat late as well. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's just it's uh it's it's a tough watch. I don't agree with batting Stuart Fairchild third. Uh, the, the thing I like about David Bell is he usually puts his guys in spots to succeed. Yeah. Putting Stuart Fairchild third against a really good right-handed pitcher. Not exactly putting him in a, a, a spot to succeed. I know he wants to keep the lineup structure, and that's important to him and, I guess, the players, but but it, 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 none of that matters. Like, <laughs> throw out whatever lineup you want. It's not going to matter today with the, with the nine – um, you know, hitters the Reds had out there. I mean, even Nick Martinez guys look good. Was 0 for three with three strikeouts today. Um, just Will Benson had some pretty ugly at bats. That's not very common for him. I got an idea. I got a thought. I, as I was thinking back to the Sunday in Oakland, and this isn't this isn't really that. Uh, like I said before, I thought the Sunday in Oakland they actually had a chance to put out a lineup that was formidable today. I'm not so sure based off the injuries and all that. Uh, but here's a thought, and, and, and some think some are going to think I'm joking here, but, uh, you know, maybe there's some seriousness. So, uh, you know, I was just looking up. Seattle, uh, I don't know if you know this, but the, the consumption of marijuana use uh, is actually uh, is, is actually protected in, in Seattle, um, uh, the, the state of Washington, for those that are keeping track. It just cannot be consumed in public view. It's also legal in California. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe David Bell gets a little nervous when he goes out west. He doesn't like the time zone, and he just has to. Maybe he has to consume some things and perhaps make his vision a little bit cloudy, and also not just his vision, but his mind a little bit cloudy. How could you fill out a lineup card and put Stuart Fairchild in the three hole? I'll never know. But you know what? I'm also not going to blame David Bell because they got one hit. Did I say that already? They got one hit. 
So yeah, you can mix and match that all you want. You know what that's like? That's like having uh, 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 three piles of turds. I'm going to try to keep it. This is a kid's show. It is 6.59 in the middle of the day. Got to keep it a kid's show. They got like three piles of turds. It doesn't matter how you mix them up in the bowl, man. They're all turds. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when you get one hit, Nick, you can mix around the lineup however you want, but ultimately at the end of the day, uh, it is what it is. So I don't know. I, I guess I'm at the point now where this show is relatively simple. They're gonna have to find some. They're gonna have to find some lightning in a bottle and have some guys play over their head until we get some guys back that are better. Simple as that. I need TJ Friedel to come back soon. Uh, Noel Ve Marte's obviously he's gone for a while. I know I know TJ Friedel or not TJ Friedel, excuse me, Matt McClain's gone for a while. I was like, I'm down in the dumps. And maybe it's just because they've had three good starters, to be fair, but it also doesn't make me feel good about the concept that if we go up against good starters, is this the norm? Is this like is this what to expect or is this just an outlier? I don't know. Usually decent offensive teams, Nick, at least if you can bear with me here. At least I would call, argue decent offensive teams aren't gonna have three straight days of what we witnessed. That's all. There's not. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of answers right now. I mean, no, there's I no. Wish, I wish there was. I mean, I, the only thing that you could maybe do is you could, you could call up a guy like Mike Ford. So when you have a day like today, when you can't play Candelario, you have another bat that you can throw in there. But it's not going to move the, the the needle that much. Um, is Bubba Thompson's roster spot really being utilized? Is it? You know, it was nice early in the year when he stole a couple bases, but when's the last time we even saw Bubba Thompson in, in a game? They're not even using him as a defensive replacement, so it does almost feel like that roster spot's maybe being wasted right now, but it's also not going to move the needle. It's like when we called up Henry Ramos. Yeah, it was nice for a week, but it didn't It didn't do anything. Yeah, well, he, he to be fair to Henry, uh, and I know we usually... He provided a little bit of a spark for like a game or two, and I'm not. Sure, yeah. I, I know what you're saying. To no be fair to you, respect to Henry. <laughs> correct. Yeah, I mean, his he's got a family too. We all have families, uh, at least most of us, you know. And if you don't have one, by all means, don't pick the Reds as your favorite franchise to watch, because then it won't make you feel much better. Um, I I don't I don't know what to say, guys. Like I really don't know what to say because at the end of the day, you got to have Major League Baseball players on your team to be able to be competitive in Major League Baseball games. And I hate to say this, but I'm starting to wonder how many Major League Baseball play, be, players we have right now that are available to us. That's all. And maybe I'm being unfair in saying that, but this is the lowest day of the season so far. Yeah, I, mean, I think there's reason to be concerned with the, the offense uh, and their overall ability to succeed long term i think there's also some a lot of credit that has to go to seattle i think both things um can be true but look uh i, I don't know if this makes anyone feel feel better or not but the the 2010 reds team um a team that i absolutely love so i've i've gone back and watched a lot of the the old games and um i just really enjoy you know during the off season watching those games they played seattle they came in 37 and 30 um they were playing great baseball uh, they lost one nothing, five one, and one nothing, and got swept in Seattle. So look, this is it's a it, you're playing on the West Coast. Um, it, you're facing really really good pitchers. Uh, it, it's not a good trend, but I, I also don't think it's necessarily something that's so damning that you know, man, we have to to go overboard and panic over on at the same time. Um, it's just you know you, you gotta. It, tomorrow's a great day to have an off day. You know, thank God they're off tomorrow. They get to fly home. They get to get acclimated back to Cincinnati. Uh, and hopefully um, you can play a little bit better at home against the Angels. I certainly hope so. And you know what? If they find a way to win the series against the Angels, then okay, we're back. You know, we, we, But it just feels like it just feels like not a lot went right this series. And, you know, I got to admit, I don't mean to say that I said I told you so, but I think I I had said I really just want to get one and keep keep some some. Some of what we gained in, 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 in Chicago. And we just gave it right back. That's that's kind of how it feels. But you know what? It is 162. The bigger concern I have, which, again, I, it might just be where I'm at. Am I, and, I, and, and I might be overreacting, guys. I'm trying not to, but I just don't know how good this team is right now. I don't know how good they are, period. I don't know how good they are, period. Period. This isn't like a, This isn't like a fluke is what I'm worried about. And I know that that might be overreacting, to be fair. Like, 
but you take away you take away some of the pieces that that again we said oh it's gonna be tough to overcome and can't if Candelario and I get I, I guess he's sick right like we don't have to worry about him being out for a considerable amount of time I hope but the worry I guess more than anything is how thin they are too I'm not trying to like I'm not trying to be overly pessimistic, but let's be honest. Like they're 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 one more injury away from just miserable existences. But you know what? I'm gonna I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna stay healthy. We're gonna find a way to Is there any chance we have anybody that can come help us? I mean, there isn't, is there? There's just not. There's Mike Ford and there's there's Connor Capel. Yeah. It's not no. they're not the they're no. not a they're not Ellie De La Cruz coming up and helping you. They're not Matt McLean coming up and helping you. They're not Christian Encarnacion Strand coming up and helping you. Um, you know, you hope that that what we saw at a CES is more sustainable. I thought he's been swinging the bat a lot better. Uh, you hope that that Candelario can can get going. Um, that's two big bats that that you know, you missed today. Um, and then yeah, I mean, I think India needs a day off. I think I think if if Candelario is back. I think giving India the day off on Friday, giving him two days off in a row would be really good. You know, let him refresh and, and come back on on uh, on Saturday. But the Reds, I think, that neither team has announced their starting pitchers, but they're supposed to face a lefty on um, on Friday, so you're probably going to want India in the lineup. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just there's 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 not a lot of answers when you when your offense plays this bad. Trace, the only guy that did play well though was Ellie De La Cruz. He had a good day. He did have a good day. He, did he did have a good play? day. The defensive play. I, did, I, I didn't get a chance to see that. Was it? Was it a ground yeah. ball or a pop up? Sorry. It was a. It was a ground ball. Uh, Espinal, who's playing third base, dove for the ball, missed it. And not nothing. Shocker. Egregious. Nothing egregious. I mean, it was. <laughs> it was. Sorry, it, I'm just it, trying to. It, line. I'm trying to give the people a little something to giggle about, Nick. Okay, I mean, it's been a tough day. Go ahead. He, he made. A, he made a nice effort diving, missed oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah, participation um, trophy. Good job. I don't even think his glove was far enough, but right. but nonetheless, he dove and Ellie got to it, stopped and threw from like a mile away, and uh, I got the runner out by like a full step. So really nice play defensively. Um, Ellie, the first player in baseball this season to hit five home runs and steal five bases. Um, so look, that's what you 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 know hope out of out of Ellie De La Cruz. But look, he's going to slump again at some point. Not to be negative on on this show when I'm supposed to bring the good vibes, but. I mean, he's going to slump at some point. He's going to have some ups and downs this year. So you're going to have to have some other guys really, you know, pick it up. I hope somebody, I hope somebody, like I said, plays out of their mind. We knew Spencer Steer was going to come back down to earth. Uh, that's, that's inevitable at some point. And so he can't carry the load. And I know Ellie's, Ellie's actually been playing pretty well, right? Let's, let's give Ellie some props. So kudos to him. Um, I don't like, think Steers. I don't think Steers had bad at bats though. I, I, he's no. I, he I'm not a, saying he's a problem. I'm just saying though his production, his actual results aren't going to continue to be what they've been. Like it seems yeah, that's but, that, that's impossible. That's yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on. Andrew Abbott, um, your, your I guess thoughts. It was great today. I mean, he you know was was pitch efficient after the last two guys weren't. Um, so the Reds you know really needed that. Um, you know, he, you know, two, two mistakes, really. Um, only, only gave up five hard hit balls the whole day. Uh, he walked three, but it, I know you were talking a lot about this. I heard a little bit of your, uh, on off the bench today, how walks are not always indicative of command. It felt like Abbott walking three days was not indicative of his command. His command actually felt really good throughout the day. Just kind of yeah. walked three batters, you know, um, maybe sort of pitching around in certain spots. None of those walks hurt him because, the two runs were all both only solo shots. But yeah, I mean, he's, he's had an incredible start to the year. He's got a 2.7 ERA right now. Uh, Abbott's really, uh, you know, I, I was a guy who said that I thought he was one of the top regression candidates and I'm looking pretty dumb for that. He's not regressed at all. He's looked as, as good as he looked last year when he was, when he was dominating early in the year. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the silver lining. I'm trying to find one. That's a silver lining, right? I mean, at the end of the day, if the starting pitching can, and, and, and they and they had some good days. I mean, I know Hunter Green yesterday was a little uh, kind of like a, I don't know what the right term is for that. That was a, a mixed emotions in regards to how that went down. He didn't really give up 
uh, but one run. Yeah, he threw, what, four innings and, and threw 100 pitches again, so that's frustrating. But at the end of it all, they gave their team a chance to win. Starting pitching's been giving their team a chance to win outside of, obviously, uh, Montas, uh, the first First game of the series, but Montas has had some good uh, good outings as well. You could argue maybe that's because of who they were against, but at the same time, you know, hey, I'm, I can't, I just can't continue to discredit Montas and who he threw the ball against. He has you, you throw the ball against whoever you throw it against. If you throw the ball well, kudos to you. So, uh, I guess Andrew Abbott. I, I don't want to say I expected this out of him, but I do think Andrew Abbott is. As long as as long as he stays fresh and healthy, he'll be just fine. He'll be just fine. I, I I'd, I'd be interested to see what Williamson looks like when he comes back too. Yeah, I mean the Reds right now starting pitching rotation has a ERA of three point nine five. That's that's thirteenth in baseball. But there's been a couple couple games where they've had several guys uh, give up a lot of earned runs and 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 still kind of have been able to maintain that. So the starting pitching's been been as good as you could have ever really hoped for to start the season. Uh, some ups and downs, but overall, I mean, I think it's been a a, a pretty big success. Um, I think the bullpen overall has been a, a pretty good success outside of a couple, you know, clunkers. Uh, Sims was was rough today. I have him on the next bar. I don't really know how much more you want to talk about that, but um, yeah, I mean, overall, the Reds are pitching pretty well, and that's really, I said it before, that's what's going to, I think, keep this team hopefully afloat if the Reds stay afloat until Matt until Noel v, probably Noel v Marte more than Matt Maybe McLean Noel, yeah. but uh but until Friedel and, and Marte are back it's going to be on the strength of this pitching because this pitching is very deep uh starting pitching and I think the bullpen is deep a lot deeper than a lot of these other teams in the NL Central um so I mean I'm not obviously not rooting for other injuries in, to the other teams but I think when when the inevitable pitching injury starts stacking up for everyone. I do think that the Reds are better prepared in that regard right now. So that's something that I, I don't think it's going to stand out to you over a 20 game sample, over a 40 game sample. But when you start getting into, you know, into to July, I, I do think the Reds' pitching depth is is built pretty well. And uh, look, you you can you can win a lot of games with a mediocre offense if you can pitch decent. Yeah, uh, check out the Mariners. Yeah, their offense was not that great. Yeah, no, no, that's what makes it even more depressing. I don't know how good the Mariners really are. I'm not sure. I'm not saying they're bad because they just they just beat the uh, what what seems to be the piss out of the Reds. But yeah, I don't I don't know how good the Mariners really are. We'll see. Uh, we'll find out. The, the Mariners did win 90, 90, and eighty eight games the last three years. So I, I'm not <laughs> saying they're bad. I'm not saying they're bad. Pretty good team, especially in the. In their home ballpark, I tell you what, I watch Andrew Abbott. I'm like, man, if that guy pitched all his home games at at that ballpark, he'd have a he'd have like a three point one five ERA at the end of the year. Yeah, well, that, that ballpark better. is nice. Uh, a couple things here, Game Time app. Uh, as always, please download the Game Time app. Uh, more than likely, for those right now is not the best time to promote going to Reds games, but maybe you like soccer, maybe you like FC Cincinnati, maybe you like. Well, actually, if you don't like a whole lot of scoring, uh, if you're into that kind of thing, maybe you should go down to Great American Ballpark. That seems like a good idea right now, if that's what you're into. If you're a guy, kind of guy that likes to sit around and, you know, maybe see a run, maybe not. Maybe see a hit. Don't count on two of them. But maybe see at least one hit. Great American Ballpark's your spot. And there's no better place to go to for tickets than the Game Time app. Just two clicks. Just two clicks. That's if you keep in track. That's one more than what the Reds had today in hits. And uh, what you're able to do then is you can get tickets. You can see all the in, all in pricing, and you can use the code Cincy. That's C I N C Y, and you get twenty dollars off your first purchase. And we would love you if you use that because you're supporting us. We we love that you support us. We appreciate you. Uh, that is the Game Time app. Go download it. Uh, it is it is solid. A couple super chats here. Uh, Ricky, uh, member for six months. Thank you. All those, uh, I really do appreciate you guys being members of our channel. I know that we're going to continue to try to do more and more um, membership content underneath our channel. In the upcoming month, we have a, we've started to kind of actually do something called planning around here where we're going to start to try to put, we're going to try to produce some consistent good content behind the paywall. Um, and it's really nothing more than just kind of supporting us that can help us pay our guys and 
hopefully continue to put out good content. But uh, thank you, Ricky. Uh, he said, this series was as bad as Trace and Nick thought Hoosier Daddy looked. I don't think it was that bad, to be honest. It wasn't that bad. I, I know Hoosier Daddy uh, significantly better looking than I thought he was going to be. So kudos to him. Ned Flanders, uh, Kevin Newman's hitting 167, which is 20 points better than our starters this series. Ned. <laughs> Ned. That's now's smart. a good time to let everybody know. Um, now's a good time to let everybody know. We don't have all the ad reads yet, but I just want to say thank you to the Ohio Suicide Prevention Foundation uh, for jumping on the show. Um very much appreciated them, and today's a good a good day to let everybody know that uh, the 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 um, crisis line. If you ever need help, the number's nine eight eight. You can also text that as well. So keep that in mind. Keep watching this Reds team, and there's a good chance you might you might need to keep that in handy. Just saying. Um, couple super chats. Ned drops another super bomb. Says, "Can we just agree in advance that we will walk Mike Trout each and at bat this weekend?" Now, nah, Ned, no, we won't do that. We won't do that. Him and um, who else do we like to throw the ball to? Uh, Christian Yelich. Yeah, we throw the ball to him too. So Mike Trout, Christian Yelich, one and one. One, no big deal. Let them hit it. See how far they can hit it. Michael Rolfe with the twenty dollars super. John says, "Meet." This is a hard day for you guys to do a show. 162, baby. Three and three in the last six. Ellie Homer today for the haters. And for a minute, love you guys in the stream. The fans of the stream are gold. Thank you for the perspective, Michael. We are six and six. Or three and three. We're three and three. We're three and three in our last six. How could you possibly be upset? Looking good. Looking great. Feeling good. Feeling great. I just can't get there today. I'm trying. Can we just be honest oh. with me? Nick, Nick, do me a favor before we do Lucas Sims. Okay. I know you got a heart out here in a minute. We're gonna we're gonna speed bait. We're gonna speed race through this last final 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 part. Can you just can you tell me or do we suck? Do we suck or not? I, I do not think we suck. Okay. All right. uh, I, I think this All pitching I, I think the pitching is good enough to to not suck. I think the offense, I think there's some some valid concerns, but I don't want to overreact to them facing really good pitching. Um, all right, that's good. That's all I needed. You talk me, you talk me down. That's all I needed. Uh, you want to talk about Lucas Sims? I'll tell you what, man. Can we just can we can we just scoot past Lucas Sims? What do you? I, I don't listen. I know. I know. I don't you, have I, a, I, would, yeah, I another, I don't How about this? Uh, for those that are wondering, they didn't get a chance to see the game. It was a bad day for Lucas Sims. Okay, we all have bad days. You had a bad day. You know, you get the song. Don't want to get copyrighted because it sounds just like them. Um, I don't know. Lucas Sims had a pretty bad day. What else? What else is there to add, Nick? You want to say anything else about Lucas Sims? No. Let's skip to Alexis Diaz. Nice. Uh, That's a good topic. Nice job for Alexis Diaz. Again, he's been a guy that has not pitched well. At least it's felt like maybe I'm over exaggerating it, but it's felt like he's not pitched well in non closer situations. Did a good job today. Uh, just gave up one hit. Um, you know, got four outs today. So that that's good to see. And he did it on twenty pitches. Um, so so good for Alexis Diaz. Outside of that one outing, uh, I feel like he's looked really good so far this year. Yeah. And there's there's gonna be there's gonna be safe chances coming. And you want Alexis Diaz to be at his best because right. the last thing you want is when the Reds start getting it going. <laughs> To, to blow some saves because that's how things can can spiral a little bit. Um, I did not get a chance to see Diaz throw to be fair because I was racing home, but but uh, I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word for it, and I will say this about Diaz: someone uh, in the chat, I think John, uh, he had mentioned Diaz almost walked in a run. Well, I don't, I do know this about Diaz, and I said this before: Diaz does that. I mean, I don't, I don't it's part of the, that's part of the stick with Diaz. Um. So. He came with the bases loaded. Right, Lucas Sims. Pretty sure. Them all. I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Also, that I did see in the box score because I wanted to check how the uh, game ended. He inherited three runners and he gave up none. So, I don't know what world that is, but he, that's pretty he, solid. He also, he also in that that same at bat, he he got a generous 
uh, strike three. I think that's probably what gotcha. okay. John is refer- is referring to. That was a little bit off the play. It was not nowhere close to the one that Spencer Steer got called. Um, that was a ball that or that got called a strike. But in that same at bat, his second pitch was called a ball at the top of the zone, and it was clearly a strike. So I mean, evens out. Threw, evens yeah, out. It, it legitimately evened out, and he came in in a really impossible spot. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, look, overall, he got four outs today. I just gave up one base runner. It's good to see. It is good to see. All right, Nick. Let's, 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 let's tie a ribbon and a bow around this whole show. Do you have any good news? Do you have any good news? Maybe. What do you a got? A little. I don't know. Uh, only two games uh, so far today in Red's uh, minor league action. As always, on the podcast version, I'll uh, run through it all for the morning, so give you a full recap. But uh, Louisville, they lost 4-3 to Iowa, bats 7-10 and 10 on the season. Lyon Richardson, I mean, he only gave one earned run, so that was a positive for him. But he walked four batters, only threw 49 of his 82 pitches for strikes. Richardson's walked 15 batters in uh, 12 and two-thirds innings this season. So, tough start to the season for Richardson. Sam Mole, another tough outing for him. Gave up a home run, three hard hit balls, and his fastball velocity averaged uh, under 92 miles per hour, down 2.3 miles per hour. Uh, Mike Ford, there's your positive. He was 2-4 with a double. That's right. Um, two hits, Nick. Two hits, baby. Morning Dow Reds, am I right? That's right, right now. That's right now, Nick. I tell you what, them boys down there, they can't get a hit to save their lives. If they fell out of a boat, they wouldn't hit water. If they fell off a camel, them sons of guns wouldn't even hit sand. You know what I'm saying? So good for Mike Ford. Um, Ian Jabot was returned from his rehab assignment after a setback. Just going to throw that one under the water. All right, the other one. <laughs> uh, Daytona, they lost... Uh, 4-3 to Bradenton in uh, 12 innings. Uh, Ricardo Cabrera, though, he's off to a great start. Uh, two for five, hit his second home run, also stole a base. Just 19 years old. He's the Reds' number nine prospect. He's got a 432 on base percentage, 984 OPS. So he's off to a good start. Uh, I got to go back and, and find this. It was actually on video. I didn't see it. But apparently Alfredo Duno stole a base today. Uh, so that big boy stealing a base, that's got to be a thing of beauty. I'm sure it's probably something weird and fluky, but I, I want to see it nonetheless. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Dominic Patelli, this guy's off to an incredible start, three for five with a double, hitting 436. If you have an OPS over 1,200 in the Florida State League, you're doing something well. Seventh round pick out of Miami, uh, Miami, Florida, this uh, past year. So um, really good start for Dominic Patelli. And then the Anior Loriano. Two more shutout innings, five strikeouts. He struck out 11 batters in his first six and a third inning. So he is pitching uh, very well. Uh, just getting underway, Dayton. Uh, they're hosting Fort Wayne, although I don't know if there's rain. There's like rain up here where I'm at. And then Chattanooga is at Biloxi at 735. That's your Reds MILB. Well, the good news is, everybody, is we are still alive. Just want to let everybody know that we are breathing. If you're in the chat, that means I can tell that you still have a pulse. If you still got a pulse, you still got a chance. The Reds, they got on a flight today. They're going to head bomb. They're going to they're gonna land, God willing. They're going to get off that plane. They're going to get some well-deserved rest. I think they're going to get back on track. And when are they going to get back on track, Nick? Who, what, they're gonna... when, where, and why, baby? Going to get back on track against the L.A. Angels. Uh, no official starting pitchers have been announced for either team uh, so far in the series, but looks like it would be Nick Lodolo up against the lefty Tyler Anderson if both teams uh, keep their, their standard rotation. And look, if you're looking for a reason, Trace, to use that game time app to get 20% off your first purchase, there's nothing mm-hmm. better. This will be Nick Lodolo's first start at Great American Ballpark in almost a year. Looked incredible um, against the White Sox. Um, I, I am looking forward to seeing Nick Lodolo pitch again. I think he's going to give a big, big boost to this team and uh, hopefully, Trace, just to add to this team's strength, which is pitching. Uh, strength on strength, baby. Find a way to win a baseball game. You know, I think if we find a way to win a baseball game uh, on Friday, I genuinely think the vibes will be back. 
today, I don't think they're going to come back. This is one of those ones you just got to sleep off. You wake up the next day and you just try to feel for, feel refreshed. You know how that is. I mean, we all have bad days. We do. I'm not going to let this baseball team get me too down in the dumps, though, for being honest. I'm going to try not to, at least. And I will say this. For as down as I've been on this show, uh, they are 10 and 10. We're begging for a five. We are begging for 500 through the first two months. Or 500. I will also admit that the uh, May schedule doesn't look anything like the start of the season, but, but, uh, but you know, hey, who knows? You never know. It'll all work itself out, Nick. That's what I'm going to keep telling myself. So, any final parting thoughts? I know you have somewhere to be, uh, so kudos to you on, on, on that. And um, just remember, it's just a baseball game. It is just a baseball game. Uh, I got to take my my son to a minor league game today uh, that I have absolutely no interest in either team, uh, just the, the local Lake County captains. And you know what? That puts baseball in perspective. You know, that's, you know, we, we talk, I love stat cast numbers. I love arguing about Hunter Green's pitch count and whatnot. But look, that's what it's all about. Go enjoy a baseball game. Go Go watch your local high school team. Tomorrow, if they're playing, watch them on your day off tomorrow from the Reds. Enjoy that. You'll get back in the right spirit. You'll be ready to go. And we're going to beat the living hell out of the LA Angels this weekend. Let's go. Only Nick, man. Only Nick. Only Nick can rise, can rise the, the, uh, the folks that are on their deathbed to their feet. He just did it for me. I'm fired up. I'm about to go find the middle school baseball schedule, and I will be out there tomorrow. I'm going to go watch some baseball tomorrow, everybody. You should go watch some, too. You know why? Because if you've been watching baseball, what you think the last few days, you really haven't, you know? It's been pretty bad out there in Seattle. But good news is, I don't play in Seattle anymore. I get to come home in Cincinnati. Maybe get some of that chili. Maybe get two hits. Maybe find a way to score a couple runs. Maybe they'll find a way to win. But I'll tell you what we will do no matter what. Win or lose, I'm going to be on time Friday. Win or lose, I'll be on time Friday. That's my promise to you. I just want to let you know I love you. Go Reds. Take care, everybody.